Aaron here, otherwise known as Ivan Fowler, and today I thought we would do a little bit of a box on about a box opening of the new Guilds of Ravnica set. So of course this came out. Well, this is a pre-release box rather than a normal box that comes out next week. But I managed to get one at my local game store and thought I'd just crack some packs. So first of all, I also have the promo card with the buy box promo, which is the impervious. Great worm. He's right there, so very nice looking. And you know what? We'll go straight, go straight into it. Now, I didn't manage to get to my pre release properly. I can only stop in for two seconds. Now, of course, they're going to be talking about all the new collector cards. So that's a Nice token there. But there is also a couple code cards I will be showing off as well, which are for Arena, as that's now gone into open beta. And in open beta, we now have code cards at work. One of them being the Planeswalker deck, and I did pick one up just so I could try it out and see how it works. And I can show you that what that card looks like, and it does genuinely work. They aren't stopping them right now, they are all working perfectly. Goblin Electromancer, lovely. And there's our first uncommon Guild Summit, the Legion Guild Mage, Rampage Monument, and our first rare, Omnis Spell Adept. You may cast an instant or sorcery from your hand with a pain cost for two blue, uh, one blue, and a tap. Now that means that you actually can play a sorcery at instant speed. Of course, for the land spots, they're all taken up by, if it wants to focus the gates. So for drafting it's a lot easier to uh, do dual colours and get your mana fixing. Let me just next one. So I'm not really going to touch on the commons too much, mainly because there are some interesting ones but nothing for example, like the reprint of Sky Knight Legionnaire, that's very cool. Maximum Velocity. And there is our first on comment, which is Demir Spybug. That is really creepy, I didn't realise it was that creepy. A split card, so let's turn that around. Integrity and Intervention. So the way these works is that you can either pay for one side of it, or you can pay for the other, or both. Um, so if you wanted to pay for all of this one, it would be... Five, two of any colour, then one red, one white, and then one of red or white, right, because it's hybrid mana. Uh, let's try my field. Well, that's a rare you want to see a lot of. So, this is the card that everyone's going nuts over right now, which is Assassin's Trophy. One black, one green, instant speed, destroy target permanent, and opponent controls, and permanents are anything. Planeswalker, land, creature, enchantment, all of it. And its controller may search their base library for basic land and put it to the battlefield, then search for the library. This is an incredible card, I'm very happy. And so I'm very happy to actually have a copy of it, as I want to play the Golgari anyway. So, that was a good second pack. I think that's what are they currently right now. I think they're only 40 bucks or something. They're going up, they keep going up. They're very overpriced, in my opinion. Especially for a card that's still not technically out yet. So, then we have a Conclave Cavalier, Grappling Sunday, Rock Charger, and a rare split card. So they do come in as well, as well. so you have Connive. Two double blue or double black or blue and black. Gain control of target creature with power two or less. Or concoct three blue black. Surveil three, then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So surveil is the new mechanic for Demir, which is like scry, but instead of putting it to the bottom of your deck, you actually put it into the graveyard. So really cool mechanic. And there is Golgari Guildgate. And a bird illusion. Now we'll just show now the arena 
code cards. So this is what they look like in the back. They're in the actual deck itself. So don't throw away all the back cards. One of them is this. So you just input this code here into the arena and it unlocks the entirety of the Planeswalker decks. Now I know the Planeswalker decks aren't ever good. Um, they've only got a few good like uncommons and the Planeswalker itself just for collection purposes. But in my opinion it's worth it was worth me doing it just to see if it worked. So we have Disdainful Strike, a really good card there. I'm going to put that to one side because it's a really good common. I'm actually happy it got reprinted. Portcullis Vine, another defender for the um, defender commander. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Another dragon from M19. I'm still building that deck. So it turns out there weren't really enough defenders in standard for Brawl. A true fire captain, a Mentor, that is the Boris mechanic, so whenever it attacks, put a 1 1 counter on a target creature with less power. Crawl Storm, Enhanced Surveillance, and Fire Mines Research, a 1 blue, 1 red enchantment. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery, put a charge counter on it. 1 on 1 blue, remove 2, draw a card, or 1 on 1 red, remove 5, deal 5 damage. Kind of a very slow burny card, it's not bad though. I mean, it could have some uses. Golgari go get in a soldier token there at the bottom. Let's just keep ripping through these. First fish recruit, that's pretty good. Boris lock it. And there we go. Four erasure, target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose a non nine card from it. And they discard it into that one. That's actually a pretty good discard spell for Demir. The Kokari split card of status and statue. Whispering Snitch. A funny looking vampire, but he is a vampire. So whenever you surveil for the first time each turn, it does one damage to each opponent and you gain a life. And then we have a Venerated Loxodden, which is a 4 1 white 4 4 with Convoke. So you can type your creatures to help pay the mana cost. In this power you put a 1-1 counter on each creature that convoked it. And then the other are of the guild gate for is it? Because I believe each one of them has two. But then there's also the and there's also uh, the guild packs coming soon. The guild or guild decks. The guild decks are the classic do uh, decks from all over Ravnica's history of all three of its blocks and it also has some exclusive lands, basic lands which look very nice and I'm uh, almost disappointed that they didn't print them in this Flight of the Equinox Gird for Battle a District Guide and our first Shockland Overgrown Tomb so of course the Shocklands have all been reprinted in this. Um, I already have from the two boosters, because again, Placeboard Pats have two boosters as well. So I do have a Temple Garden as well, which is a little bit annoying for me as I do have a full playset from my modern decks. I do not have a full playset yet of Overgrown Tomb, that is my second. So we're on a good, that's, that's good. I want to play Golgari anyway, so filling out Golgari slots is always a good thing. So we have the 10th District Guard. Now the other thing I want to try check is, according to a, um, the Mothership, at some point, they said that there were going to be code cards in packs, so you can get more packs in Arena. And I haven't seen any yet, so I won't have to double check them all. So we have a Nightvale Predator. So weird seeing vampires in blue Goblin Banneret. And a set of Necrolesque. And our first Mythic! And it's a mythic I actually really wanted. Nullhide Ferox. Two double green, a 6-6 six, six beast with hex pros. And you can't cast non-creature spells. But someone can pay two to make Ferox lose all abilities until end of turn. Any player can do it, and if a spell ability and bone controls cause you to discard Nullhide Ferox, you just put it into the graveyard, you put it straight onto the battlefield. So no, it doesn't seem to be so far we've found a cone card. But so far we are doing very good on our pack. So we've already hit one mythic. We've already hit a shotgun as well, so hopefully we can hit a couple, maybe one more of those. Would be nice to see another one. 
There's Crackling Drake, which is essentially the Enigma Drake from Almond Cat on steroids. Golgari Finebroker, Necrotic Wound, and straight into another mythic, Lazav the Multifarious. So a 1 blue, 1 black, 1 3 shapeshifter with uh, when he enters battlefield, surveil one, and when he you can pay X, and he becomes a copy of target creature in your graveyard with converted mana cost X, except his name is Lazav. It's legendary in addition to his subtitles, and has the ability to change again. And then we also have a foil rare at the back of this, which is Thief of Sanity, which is a one blue black two two spectre. Whenever Thief of Sanity deals combat damage to a player, looked up three cards of that player's library, X on one of them face down. Put the rest in the graveyard, and for as long as that card remains exiled, we look at it and cast it and spend mana of any cut to which pays for its cost. But it can be cast for any mana, I believe. So it's Gonti on a stick. So it's Gonti's ability with a new stick. Ah, there we go. So just on the back there, we have the unlock three boosters um, code card, which is play Ravnica. So that's. On the back of the tokens, so always remember, look at the back of your tokens, because you might have code cards. And I can't remember if they actually said that they are limited to one per account, but I will give it a go. Because it does seem like a very generic code, it doesn't seem like the Pokemon code cards, which are all unique. Um, we're just ripping Mythics right now. So here's Dream Eater. 4 double blue, 4 3, with flash and flying. When you use by first serve 4, we do you may return target. Long land permanent opponent control to its owner's hand. So that's three mythics in a row we've just done there. Plus a 4 in a row, that's, that's a bit dumb. Well, that might mean we've not got any more mythics in the box. To be honest, I'm not really after the mythics, I'm more after the rares in this set. So fly out the Equinauts. Ocarina Assassin, Golgari, and Pell Collector, such as this one. I really like Pell Collector. I feel I could do something pretty good with that in a, either a Golgari list or a new Elf list. As there's a lot of Elf support now. Um, especially with the fact they still got their Lord from M19. So let's flick through these commons. There's another Disdainful Strike, so always worth looking through. I would like it to focus at some point, that would help. Right, here we go. So we have... The Murmuring Mystic. Whenever you cast an instant, nice. Ghost for Shaman, the Golgari one. Another Slit card, which is... Find and Finality. So the Find part is... Double Black, Double Green, or Hybrid of Age. Turn up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand, and then the four black green. We put two one one counters on a creature control, and then all creatures gets minus four, minus four. Very nice. As you can tell for this set, um, I wish to play Golgari. I love the kind of dredge, me the graveyard mechanics. I can always say dredge, it's not dredge, it just wishes it was dredge. Swath Kelly Giant, Enhanced Fence, Goblin Gaming, another Mythic, and it's the Planeswalker, Ral Is It Viceroy. So that's our fourth Mythic, and we're doing really well for them. So we have a th he's three blue and a red for a five loyalty Planeswalker. Plus one, look at the top two cards of your library, put one of them in your hand, the other in the graveyard. Minus three, he deals damage to target creature equal to the total number of instant sorceries you own in exile and the graveyard. So that can rank up quite highly, and then for minus eight, you get an emblem with whenever you cast an instant sorcery, this emblem deals four damage to any target, and you draw two. He's a little bit bonkers, so that is a very good pull. We're going, we're going well here. I mean, pack two in Assassin's Trophy. Three mythics in a row. Still pulling more. Can we see? A fifth at some point. Boros Challenger. Night Veil Sprite. I actually really like the look of this card. If I wanted to play Demir, and I might still play Demir. The way my paws are going, I could probably play a little bit of Demir. And Defending Clarion. 
this is kind of a weird thing to see after standard of as of late is the fact that we have a modular card with one red and a white for sorcery choose one or both it was three damage to each creature or you can tr creature control gain lifelink until end of turn as they say it's one of the weaker modular cards however at the same time options is always good in magic if the spell can give you an option i would always take it so once again flick through all of these we want to just see uncommons and that's an uncommon i actually wanted to see molder hulk this is when he wants to focus come on you silly thing there we go well, Hog is a very cool uh, fungus zombie. Very key there because Death Baron is still kicking about from M19. The rotation hasn't got rid of him, folks. So Golgari has actually got a lot of options for lords. But very cool. He gives one cat, costs one less for every creature in your graveyard, and when he ends the battlefield, you return a land. Fun fact, because I've been testing him on, on Arena, because it says just target land, it means your door lands, like Overgrown Tomb, Demotion, Selective Snare. And another split card, response and resurgence, response, double red, double white hybrid, response deals 5 damage to target attacking or blocking creature, or resurgence, 3 red and a white, creature you control gain first trick and vigilance to end a turn, after this main phase there is an additional combat phase, followed by an additional main phase. Very nice, essentially that's a main phase 2 card. That can probably swing you, swing you the match. Or it's a make sure that you have another turn. I'm not sold on its first half, as I think the first half is a little bit weak. Coral Harpuno, House Guild Mage, the Glaive of the Guild Pack, and the Legendary for the. Um, Golgari, Izoni, Thousand Eyed. So it costs two double black, double green for a 2 3. So there's a lot of mana for it, only a 2 3. But this is why, when Izoni, Thousand Eyed, and Smell, will create a 1 1 black inset creature token for each creature card in your graveyard. You pay one black, one green, and you sacrifice another creature, gain a life, draw a card. That in itself is a very powerful ability. And the fact you can go from having a board wipe can cause you to have actually a board full. So, we still haven't seen another code card, we've only found that one, but I have a feeling they're all the same. So, we have Lava Coil, deals 4 times to target creature if this creature would die, exile it. Shame it's not instant speed, if this was instant speed, it'd be very good. To be a spy bug. Wonder Vertebrae, one, put a target card of your library into your graveyard, exile, shuffle up to 5. Ooh, that's actually really good. Hey, and there is another Shockland Steam Vents, which is the island or mountain one. And we reason why we call them Shocklands is for people who are newer to the game, especially with Guilds of Ravnica being for the longer the set the Shocklands in about five years. Uh, the reason why we call them Shocklands is I'll bring it back up here. It's a island or mountain. And in Enter Battlefield, you can pay two life if you do not in Enter Battlefield tap. So the idea is that you just pay two life, so you keep it online. And it's really good in Modern, especially and Legacy, because it classifies as both a mountain and an island. So our fetch lands, which searches for those specific cards, can search for those. So there's another code card, so they are generic. So if you do have Arena, if you put in the code play Ravnica right there on the screen, you'll get yourself three boosters. And that's the emblem for Ral, so I'll keep that with him. The other thing we haven't seen, we've only seen the foil rare. We have not seen a lot of other foils yet, but we are only about halfway through the box. Playcrafter and Error. Etrata, the Silencer. Two blue black vampire assassin for a 3 5. She can't be blocked. And if it deals combat damage to a player, exile target creature that player controls and put a hit counter on that card. That player leaves the game if they own three or more exile cards with hit counters on them. And the writer's owner shuffles her back into the deck. 
It's a very interesting card, especially when it comes to Commando, because it's a, you can actually use a redirect the redirection of her going to the graveyard, graveyard um, deck and put her into the command zone, so you can actually get a bit of a faster clock on. So she's an interesting card. There's another Thought Erasure, Golgari Raiders, Crush Contraband, and Dawn of Hope. So Dawn of Hope is a 1 and 1 white enchantment. Whenever you gain life, you may pay 2 if you do draw a card. Or you pay 3 and 1 white and you create a 1-1 one, one white soldier token with lifelink. That's very nice. Nice simple enchantment that makes tokens. A lot of the Selesnia stuff does make tokens. So let's just pile through. There are some good co actual, actual commons, so... Don't do what I'm doing if you're opening your box. You won't want to find out what you got. So Beam Silver Mage, District Guide, Pilfering Imps, Vivid Revival. Sorry, I'm just checking if we have any more foils. So Vivid Revival is a 4 and 1 green sorcery. To up to 3 target multicolored cards from your graveyard to your hand. And you exile Vivid Revival. I don't think that's actually going to see much play. It's a fringe card. It's good for getting back your spot like spot removal on your big B, your big BC so like getting back a assassin trophy would be very nice with that friendly push uh, the friendly push of affectionate Indrik Night Vosper again very nice Street Riot and Bounty of Might. So this is a four double green instant. And the first time I actually saw this, I thought it was a it was actually a misprint or a mistranslation. Because it's target creature gets plus three plus three into one to turn. Target creature gets plus three plus three into one to turn. And target creature gets plus three plus three into one to turn. So the way that works is that you can either target it with three different creatures or you can target it onto three separate. You can essentially target three things. If you wish. Or you can just select the same thing over and over again. I bet I believe anyway. As you just for each line of text you target. Oh, there's the new Child of Night. That does look really good. The original one's been printed in from M10 onwards. Has been kind of like a classic vampire. So I actually really do like these kind of city version of them. They look really cool. So we go the Conclave Tribunal. A so. Selesnia card. We've actually seen a lot of Selesnia cards. We've seen a lot of Demir. And there is Narcomiba, a very weird reprint for 1 and 1 blue. It's a 1 1 flyer with when Narcomiba is put into your graveyard from. Come on. When Narcomiba is put into your graveyard from your library, you may put it onto the battlefield. So essentially, if you mill it, it comes back. Very good for Demir, very good for Golgari, because they both mill. And we have a foil hypothesis. Three, blue and red. Instant draw two. They may discard an online card. When you do, it does four damage to target creature. And there is an angel token for one of the rares as well. So let's pop that to one side. Let's keep delving through. Do we have any more Shocklands or Mythics in here? Or even Assassin Trophies? I wouldn't mind having another one. So, straight onto a split card, we have a Celestia one, Flower and Flourish. So for Flower, search your library for a basic Plains or basic Forest or Plains card, reveal it and put it into your hand. Or creatures you control gain plus two plus two and so on and so on. The reason why this is interesting it's because it's social library for a basic. Because of the new shock lines, they can't just put search your library for a forest or plains. Otherwise, you'd be able to target Temple Garden or any cards that have plain or forest on them. However, my personal opinion, it would have been better if it did. And then our rare is Atrata again. So we have two Atratas. Say if I had to have a duplicate rare, that's not the one I would be choosing, but hey ho. There are a lot of rares in this that are not as good as full packs. There are there is a definite hierarchy when it comes to rares. 
Some are better than others, some are built to be better than others, it's just the nature of the game. However, that rare is a very good reprint. Also, we have a foil healer's hawk there. Chromatic Lantern. A three mana artifact, which is land you control, have tap, add one mana of any colour. And so does Chromatic Lantern. Very good cover for mana fixing. I could see that get a lot of play. Especially in the current, for the fact that we could, we have so many different color combinations. You could easily, you could get close to making five colors right now. So let's go through. There was another code card, so that's three code cards right now. So boxes do have more than one. Just a shame that they're all not unique. So there's Flower and Flourish again, Whispering Snitch again, Book Devourer, and Chamber Century. It's X for a zero zero, so it ends the battlefield with a plus one bond counter on it for each colour mana spent to cast it. So if you spend all five colours, it becomes a five five X and tap, remove a one one counter from Chamber Century, it does X damage to any target. Then pay the whole mana like the all every single colour and return Chamber Century from your graveyard to your hand. That's a card I really didn't want to see, because I don't think it's that good at all. Most times, for most of our most decks these days, with the new Ravnica sets, will probably be two, maybe three tops. So you're getting a 3-3 three, three that can shoot down something, and then you can never bring it back, because you can't play the all five colours. So let's see, Swath Colour Giant again. Thought Bound Phantasm. Smelt Ward Minotaur. And another Dawn of Hope. So we're starting to see a couple... Couple uh, duplicates now on rare. Yeah, not the best duplicates, but they are still duplicates. So it's always good to have duplicates, especially when you're building decks. The World Soul Colossus. Uh, so I believe this had a Return to Ravnica variant as well of it, Wait, but it was. It wasn't converted to something else, and it made. Um, it was like 11 11. And then Legion War Boss. The goblin who doesn't give up. So he's a 2-3. Two, 2 and 1 red for a 2-2 two, two with Mentor. So whatever is creature type with a 1-1 counter on a target creature with less power. At the beginning of combat on your turn you create a go on one goblin token. And it gains haste and, ha and attacks this combat if able. So straight away war boss comes in. Next turn you attack with him. You already have a partner for his mental effect. And every turn you always will have a partner for his mental effect because you'll always be making one ones with him. Which is pretty good. If there's if you can mentor him up as well, you could then keep mentoring things. So we have Guild Summit again. Nova Predator, Wand of Vertebrate, and the rare is another Thief of Sanity. This time, not in foil. So I have a feeling we probably exhausted all of our mythic spots. We did get them all lumped together, which is fine. So we can probably rule out any more. Ah, the reprinted Wee Dragonauts. So this was a card in Return to Ravnica as well. Very cool. Justice Strike deals damage to itself. Turk creature does damage to itself because of its power. Wow, okay. At instant speed. Arboretum Elemental. And then a rare in the form of Swift Blade Vindicator. One red, one white, a one one. With double strike vigilance and tremble. Because it needs all the keywords. And another foil. Maniacal Rage. That's the Goblin Dagon. That looks really good, actually. I'm, I'm a fan of that goblin token. So, as we move into the final five, I believe, by the looks of the box, and the... as the tower of cards, there's over me, we have Invert or Invent, so switch the power toughness of each of up to two type creatures. Or Invent, search your library for an instant and or sorcery. Oh, it's and! And real them put them in your hand. That's actually really good for an and. Price of Fame! This card costs two less if the card target is a legendary. Destroy target creature, surveil two. 
And second Necrolisk. Oh, this is a card I really wanted. Knight of Autumn. You know I said earlier that modular cards are really good at magic? Normally modular spells are really good. Modular creatures are even better. So a 1 green white 2-1 dryad knight. When it enters the battlefield, choose 1. Put 2-1-1 one, one counters on Knight of Autumn, so it becomes a 4-3. Destroy target artifact or enchantment, or gain 4 life. So I play um, a green white um, company deck. I believe I'm going to be putting that one. I'm going to be putting that knight of autumn straight in that deck because I feel it will be very good. Because it means that you're not taking up as many sideboard slots for anything like enchantment removal because you have it on your creature. You have life gain, and on turn three you can have a four three. It's very very nice. Boar Challenger, Dunham Starward, House of Marshall, and our rare. Quasi duplicate. So one double green. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control with jump start, which is the is it mechanic. So the is it mechanic is you may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a card in addition to paying its other cost. Then you exile it. So you'd have to pay three and discard a card. And you make another creature token. But remember when you're making creature tokens, they do not they will come in as an exact duplicate. So it does mean that they will be legendary. I just realised there's another layer here of, of uh, boosters, so we've got a little bit more to go. Golgari Vranbroker, Prush Contraband, Sagittarius Root, and... <laughs> oh, there's a foil uncommon. I just uh, hit file size limit, but we didn't go anywhere. We have a ritual officer. Two double black. Destroy all creatures with converted mana cost of three or less. Very good border removal, especially with the fact that we've lost um, a couple black ones. Lost a couple white ones as well, to be honest. So the uh, center rotation is quite makes a whole new world for us here. Ooh, we have another foil, so let's get that one out of the way. Which is Urban Utopia. I believe this is the attempt of trying to make Utopia sprawl. So, end spell for draw a card, and it has a woman of any color. Yeah, essentially it's trying to be Utopian Sprawl, but not as good. Chemistry's Insight. Sprouting Renewal, and... Oh, our rare is Niv Mizzet. Haroon. Triple blue, triple red for a 5-5 five five that cannot be countered with flying. Whenever you draw... If Mizzet deals one damage to any target, and whenever a creature casts an, whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery, you may draw. So essentially, whenever you cast a spell, you draw a card. You ping one, you ping something. For one. And the cycle can continue. So right to the uncommons, join shields, lead guild mage, playcrafter. And we did have another mythic in here. We have Chance for Glory. One red and white instant creatures you control gain indestructible. Take an extra turn after this one. The beginning of that turn's end step, you lose the game. So this is similar to the card from Armon Cat, um, which did exactly the same, except it was. Skip your opponent's turn, and then uh, you lose the turn at the end of at the beginning of the end step. You lose the game, and then a rare is risk factor. So it's a two and a red instant. Target opponent may have risk factor deal four damage to them. If that player doesn't, draw three with a jump start cost of discard it and pay three. Well, discard something and pay three. That's not a bad choice, really, because drawing three cards normally means you're drawing so much gas, so you probably just draw damage to them anyway. So there we go, wait, there's more. Catch up with the other five guilds in Ravnica Allegiance, where I will be having a lot of fun with the Orzov. As I'm a massive fan of the Orzov, and I can't wait for them to be back in standard. So we have Beacon Bolt, 
Sinister Sabotage, Book Devourer, and we have a third shock land in here. Another Temple Garden for me. So that is a spare Temple Garden. A spare Temple Garden number two. So our final pack. As this guy has gone on for quite some time. And there it is. Conclave Tribunal. Discover and Dispersal. Necrotic Wound. And our final rare. It's a land. Is Guild Mages Forum. A land that taps for colorless. Or pay one and tap it. Add one mana of any color. If that color is spent on a multicolored creature spell. That creature is spell filled with an additional 1-1 one, one counter on it. And that, folks, is the end of our pack opening of Guild of Ravnica. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon.